And uh, as we continue this morning's conversation, uh, Sean and I were actually exploring the Tobago Jazz Festival, which occurred over the weekend. Now, it's being labeled as a success um, by Tasha Burris. She's the uh, secretary yes. of uh, Tourism, Culture, Antiquities, and Transportation on the island. Now, we're not, I, I'm not entirely sure how you're going to judge this in terms of a success. Would it be because of the turnout? Would it be because it went, um, went through or, or it was executed without any great um, difficulties? Um, what about the financial aspect? There was a cost associated with it. What were the returns? I, I don't think we'll get audited accounts anytime soon. But all of that is part of it because uh, I think last week, the uh, Chief Secretary, Farley Augustine, uh, so the article is dated last week, Thursday, um, he said three million was spent so far to host um, the Tobago Jazz Experience. Which doesn't seem that bad all in all, if, if you have international acts and it's a multi-night, high-end production, um, hopefully with, with, you know, because quality costs money with regards to performing arts. You don't have a second chance. You can't do a redo or retake or reshoot. This is live performances. And especially when you're trying to get something to the standard of the acts that you've, that you've brought in, you know, um, which the headliners, boys to men, they've, they've been around the block. You don't necessarily want to, uh, you don't want to, 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 to make it look as though you don't know what you're doing and then weird gets around and then it's harder to attract other acts that you so, might want to attract later on. So, if we were to judge it in terms of the acts, all right, fine, fair enough. The next side is, is that... Well, well, also to justify some of the expenditure. Uh, they're, 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 let's, in a way, it's, it's nowhere near to the size or the, or the planning behind Carnival. Yes. The arguments that have been put forward for Carnival is that we've never gotten any financial return or financial gain, the government, from its investment into Carnival. It's the man on the street that really gets the returns, whether it be the, the simple nuts man, the simple vendor, the man who's rented tents, and it's only very few people who benefit from tent rentals here in TND anyway. Um, those are the people who truly benefit from Carnival. I think we saw the opportunity for young people in Tobago um, and young artists, emerging artists, um, to, to, to really show their skills and their talent. But on the flip side, if you are spending three million plus, which again, isn't an entirely bad figure. No. But if you're spending that amount of money, what are the returns that you expect? Is the argument you're going to put forward the returns? People get to show um, uh, uh, their skills and talent. The man on the street gets a job, um, and the Tobago economy, therefore, continues with its drive. It's not stagnant. Well, one of the things is, at the end of the day, this was a, a single, this is not like Carnival, which is spread out across multiple events. This was a singular event with tickets. I would assume the tickets would have helped, you know, bring in some revenue to at least offset those costs. Then there is the fact of the increased economic activity on the island, um, mainly only for a weekend. I, I, I get it, but it would be, uh, that's the thing, it's, that's hard to quantify. That's where Carnival comes in, um, even if it's just the October Carnival that was over, over a week or a weekend in Tobago, it's hard to kind of really track all of, all of that uh, dollars and cents in the economy. But we know before Wednesday of last week, tickets were at 60% sold, um, and the CEO, John Arnold, he said that usually Wednesday was when they, they, they get a rush for tickets, so um, hopefully he is, is he here to, to join us? Okay, so he's not with us here. Um, but the point I was making was that, you know, the, so he should be here with us for a minute, and hopefully he could tell us how, how those ticket sales went. So those direct ticket sales, if, if what he said does come to pass, and we know Trinice could be very last minute, oh, I want to go to jazz all of a sudden. That, that, that should be good enough. I think for the most part, even if you just break even, it's a benefit to the economy because it adds, it adds more visitors and more visitors just helps all of the things connected to what that means. Um, maybe not the air bridge because that has its own logistical issues. All right, I think Mr. John Arnold is uh, with us now. Uh, good morning, Mr. Arnold, could you hear us? I think he might be muted too. Yeah, sorry about that, sorry about being late there. <laughs> Such a it's, 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 a, it's, yeah. 
It's all right, it's all right. So, I mean, we, we, we started off the conversation with the, with the Jazz Festival, and, and we wanted to ask, um, well, the first basic question, how were the ticket sales? I know you said, well, before Wednesday, they were at 60%. You anticipated a, a, a high uptick. Um, of course, in these economic times, you can't take anything for certain. But how were those ticket sales for the Jazz at the end of the day? No, I think, I think the attendance at the... At the at all the venues suggest that we um, we definitely were, were very heavily subscribed to. And I think there's significant, there's significant evidence that the patrons had a great time. They love the return. And at all the events, every single one, we saw the numbers from the time we went to gospel jazz on Thursday and we saw the momentum just kept going until we had the great avalanche on um, Sunday where it was quite obvious we were in the vicinity of maybe six to seven thousand um, persons even more I, I guess because it was just clearly the three sections were heavily subscribed grounds VIP and greens so all in all, I think it was a great return. And if you look on the social media and all the reports, you would see that people had a glorious time. Well, you said it's a great return, and uh, Ms. Tashia Boris has also uh, expressed that uh, it's it's a success. On what grounds are we judging that? That's the debate my course and I were having. Um, are we, you know, in other words, what was the outcome that was hoped for financially or economically um, versus what was achieved? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the metrics, you can use several metrics when you talk in events. I mean, one can be certainly the fact that your airline put on extra flights and they were all occupied. Um, so you can also look at the the idea that, of course, on the, air, the airlift and also on the sea transport, those numbers, I'm certain we don't have them yet. But certainly from the patronage and the fact that extra sailings were afforded, certainly would be one indicator. The second indicator would be obviously the fact that your gate receipts show that you had several persons coming to pay to enter the facility. And then obviously from basic looking at the footprint in terms of how the square footage was used indicates to you what the kind of patronage is. So, I mean, there are several metrics we can use to determine whether or not the success factor. Also, we did entry and exit surveys. And those, of course, will be collated, analyzed, and so on to determine real hardcore metrics in terms of that. But even from looking at the media responses from people, and again, you can also do a cursory kind of review of the social media responses and the kind of feedback you got, which indicates that certainly there was a certain measure of success from that. Well, what's about the, the vision to attract an international audience? So what was that like in terms of the presence of an international audience? Because I would assume that, that this this is one of the goals that uh, the festival hoped to achieve and, and will be aiming to achieve for coming events? Yeah, so I think one of the fortunate things you have to understand about Tobago um, is that for Tobago, don't, don't ever forget the fact that part of our strategies has always been the domestic market. Mm. So one of the fortunate things about Tobago is that it attracts a heavy domestic market which is critical to the whole tourism product. So even beyond that, of course, regional and international, this year there was not a big push, right? Because as again, coming out of COVID, you know, we had our challenges. So the domestic market was the key. And again, from, from the past, we have seen where the research shows that 65% of the visitors to Tobago Jazz experience are from Trinidad. So basically, I think moving forward, as we look to that, there's several factors that will have to obviously move to deal with the international visitor arrivals. Uh, one would obviously be airlift, 
all right, how do we do that? And the second consideration would be capacity in terms of assessing whether or not we do have the room the room capacity to deal with a, a massive influx yeah. of both domestic and international. Well, one thing to ask, I'm not too sure how much this is um, under your purview, because um, you're directly with regards to the event, not necessarily with the wider happenings of Tobago itself, but was there any talks with regards to, the, look, this is a major event on the calendar. Of course, we hope that it brings in patrons from outside Tobago to come and, 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 and buy tickets and participate for as many nights as possible. Did Tobago seem as though it was busier? Was there, was there any thought that, look, once we get people here, even if the event is not that profitable, the, the, the influx into the economy would be worth it with all of these visitors? Or when you actually had the weekend, did Tobago just for the most part seem to be at the same level of energy and activity and, and, and with regards to people on the island? No, I, I, I think as a matter of fact, I saw on another station where um, there were two visitors who actually came from, from uh, the US for the festival. And that was just one sample there. Um, I, I don't know what the metrics will say in terms of how many actually came for jazz. I know that person, that couple, who was speaking on, on one of the programs indicated that. But I want to go beyond that. I think all of us are quite aware of any major activity in a space over a, a, a significant or a specific time does have spin-offs. I mean, there's no doubt that last weekend with a four-night event, we saw, and I mean, I know, uh, we saw several visitors here. Uh, we had a free event called Seafood and Jazz at Buku, and that was a late addition. And it was just amazing, the nightmare that, that was created in that area with traffic and attendance. It was oversubscribed. And my thing is, when you think about entrepreneurs throughout, right, um, and also the business sector, whether it be groceries, restaurants, gas stations, bars, artisans, everybody would have had a great time in the last week, right, benefiting from this massive um, event. And I think for the return, I think what's important is coming out of the COVID indicates that people are hungry for real quality entertainment and they're willing to travel to enjoy that, to be entertained at the level of, and in our case, we keep talking about much more than music. We want you to enjoy other elements of Tobago, pardon me, that are not just music oriented, but in terms of destination orient, orient, orientation. And I think well, that Sano, was... I, 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 again, we're speaking about the returns. Uh, let me ask you directly. Um, uh -huh. Was it worth it in terms of the expenditure of foreign exchange, given our current situations as well? I mean, there's, there's no doubt about that, that Forex had to be utilized. Was it really worth it? Was, was it something that you can safely say, I'm definitely going to go forward again, given the results of this? Bear in mind, this is the first, first jazz festival after so many years. I mean, we have to be fair in that sense. Not so many, it's just three years. So we <laughs> make it sound like a long time. It's three years. Not so many. Long enough. But was the foreign exchange worth it? Of course. Any, anything that you have to invest, um, you have to invest. I mean, that's just the nature of the, of, of the industry. You have to invest. It's part of what you have to do. And if, if that is that you need to have what I call a tourist center um, artists that are going to bring the numbers but it's all about bringing numbers. And if you're gonna have that, then it, it is worth that in terms of you have to, you don't have a choice. Um, I mean, at the end of the exercise, we will certainly be able to do the post-event evaluation and determine a number of these things that um, you, you are alluding to. Um, 
But if you ask me my personal and professional opinion, yes, it is. Um, you, you're going to have the expenditure and investment, and they're necessary if you want to get the kind of kind of artists that will give you what I call the tourist center initiative. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. John Arnold, I want to thank you very much uh, for joining Sean and I on uh, Talking Point this morning uh, to give us a, a brief uh, overview of the, the results following the Tobago Jazz Experience. Um, and uh, we look forward to more to come from the Tobago Festivals Commission and further conversation in the future. Yeah, but anytime. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Arnold. All the best. And that was Mr. John Arnold, CEO of the Tobago Festivals Commission. Ladies and gentlemen, Talking point, uh, uh, just actually very quickly, at least Mr. Arnold makes himself available. Yes. <laughs> I agree with that before you even realize the one I agreed with, but technically, Keaton is right. We break for WSN's news on the hour.